Breaking news today, just now, Bobo VR has dropped a new accessory for the Quest 3 lineup. Their first ever foray into controller accessories. It is a set of silicone grips that go over the controller and extend the controller, make them a little longer. There's a bunch of features actually we'll break down here for you. But first we gotta tell you, you know Bobo VR and the way they name things. The BG3 Plus, that's Bobo VR grips for the Quest 3 Plus, are their new controller grip line. Launching today, April 26th, at a price of $24.99 although returning customers get 10% off and early bird customers until May 10th get another 10% off. So if you do decide to pre-order today, you're gonna get them for $19.99. There'll be a link down in the comments in the description in case you do wanna do that. Make sure you lock in both those discounts. But if you do wanna hold out, I've got a set coming to review. They've confirmed they're already shipped them. they are on their way to me. I don't have them in hand yet, so as far as the news goes, I will be telling you the features and everything that they've given me, but know that this is the information directly from them. This is not something I've gotten to test in hand yet. So basically these are silicone grips but they do extend the controller longer in your hand they do not replace the battery door or do not make an accessible battery door for you through them you will be removing them each time you do replace the battery door although there's a detail we can pick out in the picture here there's something going on there's little spots in the grips whether this is for a charging spot or for a battery door some sort of hook-on replacement it's not clear but there's something definitely there in the pictures the grips extend the total length of the controllers by over two-thirds of an inch. You can see a hole for the lowest tracking light on the controllers as we've shown you before with the infrared camera. There is another infrared light down there for tracking and then the top doesn't obstruct any of the tracking lights on top. They're calling this a replaceable ultra fine fiber professional sports material safety wrist strap which is the hand strap that goes around your hand and is swappable. Maybe more alluding to the future of these grips being more than just one initial set of grips but they say that those hand straps are lightweight and breathable but then they also have ducts on the side so if your hands are perspiring, it will allow that perspiration to move down those ducts on the side and allow you to still hang onto the grips through them. It shows they install like any other set of grips. Basically, it looks like you're gonna take the controller door handle off so you can take the stock strap off because it does look like the strap does not accommodate this. You're gonna slip the controller in through the grips and then wrap that strap around your hand and Velcro it back down on the other side so that it holds onto your hand firmly during gameplay. The package is gonna include, of course, the grips, but it even includes a set of backup straps. So these are pretty easily swappable. I'm excited to get these in hand because sometimes I will warn you I feel like ones that have these top buckle I have found to be a bit of an issue on top of my hand although those are with grips that I'm having to squeeze my hand into so this extra length on the controller might help negate that issue but it is something to be aware of with a knuckle being at the top like that and they are all black grips so if you do care about the fact that the controllers are white personally I usually like black grips because they don't show dirt as much over time but I'm excited to see mobile VRs taking a step in another direction with the headsets and the accessories that we get what do you think out there are you going to be pre-ordering a set of these today if you do there's links to do that down below are you going to hold out from my review on them or have you already got grips you like i've tried a lot of different ones but i'm definitely going to be trying these ones and see what i think keep in mind there is also that abaca set we don't know when they're coming but i've talked about them multiple times because i like the abaca grips they are what i used for the quest 2 and the fact that they usually charge up your controller i liked although i feel like bobo's got something going on here with this picture so let me know what you're thinking there we'll talk more there and let's talk about what else is going on in the news though in a big change from the norm of what we usually see from Meta Reality Labs, their AR VR division. This quarter, they actually saw quarterly revenue growth, and they say that's driven by Quest headset sales. 30% year over year in quarter one, 2024. Keep in mind, as I always tell people after working in business for several years, stats like that can be extremely deceptive. They're saying that quarter one of this year was 30% up year over year in quarter one last year. Quarter one last year might have been absolutely terrible for them, or there might have been a bounce back. There's a lot of things that can change statistics like this but still to see them ever reporting growth is a good sign because it seems like all we ever hear reports about is them losing a lot of money even on upload vr who report on this there's a graph here showing how q1 2024 when compared directly to q1 of 2023 does look a lot higher if you were to look back at like q1 of 2022 that's much higher closer to when the quest 2 launched which was very popular at its lower price point although with the quest 2 going to a lower price this year and the quest 3 launching we do see that q4 of 2023 was also their best quarter yet at over a billion dollars. Basically, quarter one of this year, Meta reported $440 million through Reality Labs, which was 30% higher than the same quarter last year. It is a good sign for Meta Reality Labs in the Quest 3 that we're seeing these sales, although as we reported to you over the holiday season, Quest 2s were selling two to one still as they were about half the price of the Quest 3. We're seeing the Quest 2s are continuing to sell and they're continuing to lower prices on them all. And although their revenue was higher this quarter, as you can see by another graph here, their costs are still immense 
months per quarter and way outweighing their total revenue. But Zuckerberg had said before that this investment was going to be a long-term investment, putting a lot of money in to help create this future with VR, or metaverse, whatever they want to call it. So it's not unexpected, but a better quarter is at least something to celebrate than a worse quarter would have been. Part of what could have fueled that big growth was the price cuts we saw on the Quest 2, its accessories. But we recently reported to you that the new lower price on the Quest 2 and even its first party accessories were all lower now to their permanent prices. Those sale prices did become permanent. Also fueling the fire of rumors saying that the Quest 3 Lite may be coming something to replace the Quest 2. Although it's good news that the Quest accessories also got cheaper. The first party ones, I've got to be honest with you, there's not a single first party accessory for the Quest 2, even at their new price that I would recommend you buy. There's just too many better ones than third party. And we have a million reviews here on the channel of other ones that you can go look at. A million's obviously not true, but we are approaching our 2000th video on YouTube here soon, which is pretty wild. But with those lower prices, that may continue to fuel, hopefully at least the sales side, if not the cost side of Meta Reality Labs. Earlier this week, big news drop. We talked to you about, about how Meta is now opening up Quest's operating system, allowing other companies to make headsets operating on that same one. And now big industry insiders are finally weighing in with their opinions on it. John Carmack, who used to be one of the big names over at Meta, and a lot of people said was one of the last good names to leave, being the former CTO, gave us a little inside look into how Meta runs, saying that basically Meta sells its hardware at costs, meaning the Quest 2 and the Quest 3 are being sold at about what it costs them to produce them. He's saying this may not be a great idea to partner with other companies because they would have to price those headsets higher than the Quest no matter what if they're hoping to make any profit off them because those companies wouldn't be recuperating any of that on software sales like Meta does. Carmack was always a big believer of opening up the VR market to more people and having lower costing headsets so this means more headsets will be at a higher price still making the Meta headsets look the most appealing but he believes that allowing other manufacturers to make headsets that do push things better like the resolution or the field of view or even comfort could bring with it a tension that will make it look like Meta no longer has the shine of making industry leading high end gear. And this approach of Meta then having to focus on novel new hardware systems from the research pipeline for their high end systems. And he suggested basically this could force Meta to make poor decisions about how they're going to move forward and still look like the most advanced company in the VR space. He also touched on how software would, would be better to focus on the current software and the problems it has and making better communication rather than now suddenly focusing on communicating with all these extra companies that are producing headsets on Quest OS, even saying that VR is held back more by software than by hardware currently. Palmer Lucky, one of the original Oculus founders, also reacted to this news saying basically he hopes that it isn't too late, but that he had actually always had this plan of opening up the platform to third party headset makers. And that was the plan over 10 years ago when Oculus was bought by Facebook. But then he says Facebook later pivoted away from that. Palmer Lucky even talked about back in 2014 when he said if they really want to get a billion people in VR, it can't all be a billion Oculus headsets, they have to open up the ecosystem. And he said that as this was always the correct strategy, hopefully it isn't too late. With both of these voices being, of course, former Meta voices, the current Andrew Bosworth over at Meta also jumped in to talk about how he feels about this being the current CTO. And as we see a trend here of pointing back to older statements to help solidify their current feelings, Boz talked about how even back at the Quest 1 launch, he had said that they were trying to create an ecosystem, not just a device here. But he did point out how it's hard to make one headset that all around works for everything the best. So he said, if you want to build one headset that's great for fitness or one's great for productivity or even gaming, there's trade-offs you have to do. So partnering with these different companies could basically allow each of them to focus in on exactly what the headset could be used for. It's been interesting to see a lot of the insider reactions and even the media reactions and with other opinions from those of like mixed news talking about how this is Meta's way of setting up basically to be able to compete with other big headset manufacturers. Because if they open up their ecosystem and they have a whole bunch of people producing in that ecosystem, that means there's a lot of headsets out there with Horizon OS, as they call it, or basically Quest OS going up against when Apple's OS is on multiple of their headsets, or if Google uses their own OS. Pointing to the fact that Meta is no longer heavily challenged in the VR space after years of selling very cheap VR headsets, but now with others coming back in, seeing the space more ripe for the picking, this could help set them up to be prepared for that. And with all of that vision moving forward, we keep hearing talks about AR glasses being the next step in the space and Meta possibly having their most amazing set of them at Connect to Test this year. Meta also dropped another blog on the Quest blog talking about the new Ray-Ban features that have come out with Ray-Ban getting the visual AI we've talked about before, a new video calling, which is like a POV video call and even a new style option. Basically, Meta's putting their Meta AI in the Ray-Bans and the AI has been in testing for 
for a while now. People have even gotten to get in early and check it out and see what it's like to look at ingredients and ask Meta, what do I have in front of me? Or what is this restaurant like? With a lot of mixed results. And the AI is kind of the headlining bit about all this. Although personally, I feel like the view sharing in video calls is kind of an intriguing option. So basically in WhatsApp or Messenger, if your glasses are connected, you can start streaming your view in the call through the glasses. Although that's rolling out gradually, so not everyone's going to get that. It's strange because so often in calls, we're always holding the camera to ourselves. It would almost be like if you held up your phone and you flipped your camera around and then the whole video call was you pointing at things and talking about them instead. And then they added one more style of Ray-Bans called Skylar. Apparently in a podcast recently, Mark actually said that they are selling out of these things as fast as they can produce them. So these Ray-Bans are in demand. We did a full review on the original. I never reviewed this, the second edition, which are much better than the first. But the original, I said they were too expensive for what you get. Although when you think about it, the name Ray-Bans, if you buy sunglasses from that brand, they're almost as much as these anyways often. And the second gen is a lot better in a lot of ways. If for some reason you all do want a full review on the second ones, let me know. I do keep them. I use them for traveling. The music is nice. Being able to still hear your surrounding world. And the fact that I have transition lenses on mine is really nice because you can actually wear them indoors and take video. But then if you walk outside, they do transition. But if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments down below. Glad to be giving you some more news, a lot more things, positive things. It sounds like happening in the space, which is always good. But once again, all of you are showing up, supporting us. The channel's growing so much because of you. I want to say another huge thank you, and I'll see you in another reality.